What is red pill rage? What does that mean? What does that even mean, Sean? I want you to open up your Bible to uh, the book of Genesis chapter 3, starting in verse number 4. The Bible says, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them were both opened, and they knew that they were naked. The Bible says uh, their eyes were opened. The eyes of both of them were opened in verse 7. And they knew the difference between good and evil. You see, before you take the red pill, you don't know that, that there's a difference between the blue pill world and the red pill world. Just like Adam and Eve in the garden didn't know the difference. Uh, um, sorry, somebody's stalking me over there um just like when you um where was i um just because like adam and eve in the garden didn't know any difference between good and evil they didn't know that they were naked after they ate the fruit right and immediately what did they do they went and made clothes to cover up a lot of the times when our eyes are open to the truth of something especially you know after we've been deceived right adam and eve got deceived by this by this uh, devil, this Satan. You know, if, we, if we've been tricked into believing a lie, you know, sometimes we can get angry. And, and not only will we get angry at the person who tricked us, but we can even get angry at ourselves for being tricked. Oftentimes, uh, you can get so mad, you, you start to point the blame at everybody else but yourself and that's exactly what Adam and Eve did look at your Bible down at verse number 9 the Bible says in verse 9 the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him where art thou verse 10 and he said I heard thy voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself and he said who told thee that thou wast naked hast thou eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou should not eat and man said well the woman thou gavest to me she gave me to the tree and I did eat we can see that the first thing Adam does here is he points the finger at Eve and he blames God you know and he says hey look it's your fault you the one who gave me this woman and, and she's the one who gave me the fruit it's not my fault I'm I didn't do anything now look at verse 13 let's see what Eve did and the Lord God said unto the woman what is this thou hast done? And the woman said, Well, the serpent, he beguiled me, and I did eat. So Eve, she did the same thing, right? She tried to point the finger at somebody else to blame. She pointed the finger right back at the snake and said, Oh, it wasn't my fault. It was the snake. He's the one who tempted me. It was his fault. A lot of the times we find ourselves in trouble, you know, and, and sometimes this trouble that we find ourselves in, it's not even our fault. You know, sometimes it is. Like Adam and Eve, they got themselves into trouble. They ate of this fruit. But sometimes, you know, when things bother us, you know, when things are troubling us, things are going wrong in our life, you know, we don't say anything. We, we bottle it all up inside. And sometimes that can make things even worse. So what we need to do is we need to understand that in our life, there's always going to be situations that we don't like you know we need to learn how to deal with these emotions that we're going through that come along with these different situations and that's what I want to talk about in this video well that was a long introduction but <laughs> greetings friends this is Sean Elvis welcome to my channel if you're new here um, good to have you and in, in today's video I want to talk about the sin of hate and anger See, hatred is a deadly sin. It's one of the seven deadly sins that I've been preaching on this past week that oftentimes could even lead to murder. And, and forgive me, you know, this message, um, it was difficult to write for me, and I'm going to be all over the place with this. Um, but try to dig in and find the little nuggets of gold that are in this message. 
because they, they will be scattered out like Easter eggs. But anyway, and I'm and I, I'm not going to be able to cover everything, and I do apologize, you know. But you know, um, this is also why you know why why I'm preaching on this message is Jesus said, you know, we are not to even be angry at our brother because Jesus said, even if you're angry with your brother, it's it's it's, it's as if you have killed him already in your heart. It's as if you're already a murderer. It's like you're murdering them if you if you just hate your brother in your heart. You know, and with and with all these restrictions that YouTube has nowadays on hate speech, um, it, it's it's almost like YouTube is is kind of like accusing us of of this sin of hate, of this sin of murder, right? When a lot of the times we're just releasing our frustrations out, right? Because the Bible says that. You know, if, if we're not supposed to hate people, but at the same time, we do have freedom of speech, right? We do have freedom to rebuke people who have done wrong to us. We do have re, uh, reason to uh, say, speak our mind and speak our peace. Because if we bottle it up inside, that can lead to hate, you know, which, which would actually end up making the problem worse. You know, and I think that's why a lot of these, these uh, you know, and, and forgive me for saying this, but that's why a lot of people go out and create and commit mass murders, right? That's why women go out there and they, and they um, uh, abort their babies or, you know, they do atrocious things, you know, they do whatever it is, you know, it's because people bottle up that anger and they don't, and they don't uh, release, they're not able to release and vent and speak their mind the way that they ought to. You see, because what I want to discuss in this video is the difference between rebuking somebody and hating somebody. You see, and I think YouTube has confused the differences between hate speech and rebuking people for doing wrong. Um, for example, if, if I were to scold my child for running into the street, you know, like if my child just arbitrarily ran into the street without thinking about uh, looking both ways and um, without taking any safety precautions, you know, I'm going to scold my child, not because I hate my child. You don't think I hate my child for telling him, hey, don't do that. Don't you ever do that again, right? I'm trying to correct their behavior for their own protection, right? For for the, and not just for my child's protection, but for the driver's protection. You know, people, people, um, uh, they, nobody wants to be running over um, innocent kids, right? Now, so, or you know, give me, let me give you another example. Let's say that I'm married and my wife, uh, maybe, she's wearing some perfume that I don't like. This perfume gives me a headache or something, and. And every time uh, she wears it, I, I just I get a headache, and then I start getting irritated, and then I, and then I get put into a bad mood, and we start arguing over it, whatever. But and you know, instead of me telling her, "Hey, it, it's your perfume that I don't like. Would you, would you please stop wearing that perfume? It gives me a headache." And and in, and instead, you know, I bottle that up inside, and I don't say anything, and I and I just. Um, and I take my anger and my frustration out on her in, in different ways instead of just coming out and saying, hey, I, would you please not wear your perfume? You know, and, you know, and, and she, she, she would get mad at me or, you know, then she, she would get mad at me. Like if, I, if I'm if I'm not uh, communicating with her, she'd get mad at me and, and, and say, you know, why, why are you acting this way? You know, why? Why are you? Uh, being so angry with me all the time, you know, and then like, let's say w way down the line, I finally revealed to her, well, it's your stupid perfume. I don't like you wearing that perfume. You know, she would just say, hey, why didn't you just tell me a long time ago? You know, you could have just told me to stop wearing it and I would have stopped, you know, you, I would have thrown it out, you know, like you see many MGTOW videos are nothing more than men expressing their frustration their legitimate frustrations on a difficult situation in their life and they're trying to um, explain uh, the the problems with relationships nowadays and you know sometimes it's just to vent and 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 tell uh, women hey this is what I see you guys are doing wrong or or this is what I see that's wrong with the government or whatever because they don't want to bottle it up inside you know because it's unhealthy to bottle it up inside and it's not that uh, MGTOW men hate women, you know, they're, they're not trying um, to destroy women or belittle women. Uh, I honestly think that it's, it's men trying to, to not only express to other men, but just to express to women as well that, hey, 
you know, this is what's bothering me, you know, and I have a right to be bothered because this is wrong. What I'm seeing, what I'm witnessing is, is wrong and it's unjust so that, you know, hopefully uh, the women could be mindful of this and the society as large could be mindful and correct the problem. Long intro, like I said, there's nuggets in here of gold. <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to be in the Old Testament again, in the book of Job. So if you want to read along uh, in the King James Bible, um, turn to Job chapter 1. Um, but before, before I start there, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a point that the Bible says in, in the New Testament, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, um, the Apostle Paul says, I say therefore to the unmarried and to the widows... It is good for them to abide even as I. Now, the, what he means is he was not married. So he's saying it's good that if you, it, you know, it's good that if you're unmarried, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with staying unmarried. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. You see, marriage in the Bible is the only lawful way to have a sexual relationship with another uh with your spouse, with a you know, with a man or a woman, obviously. Now, imagine if you were to really like somebody, um, but instead of going up to them and telling them, "Hey, I really like you. I'd like to marry you," and you know, you just keep all those feelings bottled up inside, right? And you never tell the person, and eventually, you're gonna burn inside. It's gonna, it's gonna, it could lead to lust. It could lead to anger. You know, maybe if uh, that person uh, goes with, goes out with somebody else right and the devil's going to come along and he's going to tempt you to sin he's going to tempt you to do something that you shouldn't be doing and tell you hey look it's okay you can sleep you can sleep with another woman you can sleep with that woman and not marry her right just like he convinced Adam and Eve to eat the fruit and after you fall into sin this the devil's going to sneak away he's going to he's going to sneakily slither away and 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 he's going to laugh at you from a distance and, and enjoy watching your destruction as, as the sin that he tempted you to commit destroys you, right? Whether it be, um, well, whatever it is, I'm not going to name a bunch of sins. And if you start pointing the blame at, at some other person, you know, instead of accepting responsibility from your own actions, you know, it could lead to all kinds of wickedness, false rape allegations, murder, abortion, adultery, whatever the case may be, you know, so today, I just wanted to say a few words about the importance of speaking your mind and not bottling things up. Um, because have you ever heard the phrase, speak now or forever hold your peace? You know, it's, it's, it's kind of a misleading statement because if you, if you don't speak, it means you're not gonna, you might not be able to hold your peace, right? That anger or whatever is inside of you is going to bottle up and it might destroy you. So you need to speak now so you can be at peace that you said something right and um so i want to i want to talk today about uh job uh, he's a character in the bible a big character um who went through a really tough time in his life you know really windy day in here in denver that's why i'm trying to do the video over here what's not as windy um, i apologize anyway so back to job you know a lot of people accuse job of being crazy they accused him of hate speech. They, they blamed him for all his problems and, and called him a whiner and a loser. And, you know, even though he was an innocent man, he didn't do anything wrong. He had legitimate complaints. And I want to remind you first, before I begin, that, you know, the Bible says in Leviticus chapter 19, the Bible says, Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Leviticus 19.17 How many times have men in the MGTOW community been accused of hating women? Right? I know a lot of the videos that I put out, people, especially women, will accuse me of, 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 of hate speech. And the women will say, "Why? what do you hate women, Sean? What's wrong with you? What are you talking about? And, and see, the thing is, is do us MGTOW men hate women? No, we don't, we don't hate women. I mean, granted, yes, there are some, there are those few bad apples in the, in the group, right, who ruin it for the rest of us because they're loud, they're obnoxious, and, and, you know, always the loudest people who get heard, right, and, and who um, the gainsayers will point to and say, oh, look, see, this group's bad because look, look at this guy over here, right? 
But when we read in, in, in chapter 19 of Leviticus where the Bible commands us not to hate our brother in our heart, right? And notice it says in our heart, and it's not just hate speech that, that, that God is outlawing. God outlaws hateful thoughts in our heart and in our mind. But look at the second part of the verse, and this is what I want to focus in on. Is the, um, It says, Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Did you hear what I said? In any wise rebuke thy neighbor. So God commands us to rebuke our neighbor. When we see our neighbor doing something wrong, we're supposed to say something. You know that, uh, that government uh, just came into my mind where they say, hey, if you see something, say something. Well, that's what God says. He says, hey, if you see your neighbor sinning, say something. Right? Don't just bottle it up inside. Especially if it's, you know, it could lead you to anger. It could hurt somebody if they keep if they keep doing it, if you don't say anything. Right? So, ow. Man, man, blowing dust in my eyes. Sorry. This video. Curse God for the... No, I'm just kidding. All right. <laughs> uh, anyway, where was I? So God commands us that we should um, rebuke our neighbor, right? And a lot of the times, you know, we, um, we find ourselves bottling things up that people have done wrong to us. We don't want to say anything. We're afraid, we're afraid of uh, confrontation or, or starting um, a fight or something, right? But God says that it's healthy to put our grievances on the table, right? It's healthy to talk about things that are bothering us and to take our issues up with people. <clears throat> because otherwise we that might turn into anger against them and and then we might fall into sin because of that so the book of job back to the book of job you know book of job is a story of a man who he's an honest respectable man you can read that in verse one and who unfortunately he lost everything through no fault of his own right and and and, and satan i think was was jealous or something or envious of him and and he went to god and he said god you know, because God was bragging about Job. God was like, man, look at my, look at my servant Job. He's so awesome. He, he always prays to me. He always does what's right. He always worships me. This, I love this guy. And then Satan's like, well, he only does that because you protect him and you bless him with everything. And God said, well, you can, you can do anything you want to him, Satan, but don't kill him. And we'll see what happens. So Satan does do that. He, he takes everything from this guy right i mean this is an honest respectable guy and satan takes everything so i thought this would be a good story to compare to us MGTOW men you know who have been wronged by women and society through no fault of our own right and, and we start speaking up and making videos about it and and they start uh the bashing us and falsely accusing us Right? Just like the book of Job. You know, the devil comes along, takes everything he has, his business, his reputation, his wealth, his wife, his children. I mean, the devil, I mean, he took everything from Job. The devil just completely destroyed him without, without killing him, right? And this caused Job to be very upset, and rightfully so. Um, so if you have your Bible, go ahead and look at Job chapter 1, and I want to show you a few things. Uh, look at the last verse, and it says, the last verse of Job chapter 1, it says, Even after all this, Job did not sin. He did not accuse God of doing anything wrong. Right? So even after Satan took everything Job had, he simply just prayed to God about it and said, God, I don't know why this is happening to me, but there's got to be a reason because I'm, I'm not going to blame you. Right? So, you know, and I think, you know, a lot of times people, uh, the devil comes into people's lives. He takes everything from them. He destroys their lives, ruins everything, ruins all the good in their life. But instead of looking to God for help, they blame God. They turn away from religion. They blame religion. They blame the Bible. But not Job. See, Job remained faithful. And later on in the story, we discover ultimately that the best medicine to deal with our frustrations is to pray to God, okay? And tell God, hey, God, this is how I'm feeling. And, you know, even sometimes it's okay to, to tell God, hey, I'm frustrated. Like, why is this happening, right? It doesn't always have to be a peachy prayer, okay? God wants honesty. 
because eventually, at the end of the story, God restored Job. He restored everything he had. And he said, look, even though you said some stupid things, Job, you prayed some, and, and you even accused me, God, right? Even you accused God. You were honest with me, and I appreciate that. You know, and, and, and looking at myself, you know, I appreciate when somebody, especially a woman, you know, my, that I'm in a relationship with, will come to me and be honest with me and say, hey, Sean, here's how I feel about this, right? This is what's bothering me, okay? I appreciate that. <clears throat> but, at, you know, at the end of the book of Job, God rebukes Job. And he says, hey, look, Job, I appreciate the honesty, but listen, man, you got the wrong guy. It's not me you should be angry with, right? It's Satan. It's the devil, right? You don't know everything that's going on behind the scenes, Job. You're just a man. You have limited knowledge. I'm God. I am all-knowing, all-powerful. I know everything. And I think some men confuse the difference that, hey, you know, it's not women that are the problem. It's the devil. It's sin. It's the behavior of people, you know, whether you're a man or a woman, you know, you can act righteous or you can act unrighteous, right? Like, for example, if a woman decides to whore herself around, cheat on you, and us men speak up and, and call her names, call her a whore, and say, hey, this isn't right, what she's doing, we don't like this, you know, we, we will be labeled hate speech, Right? We are falsely accused of hate speech when, when all we're doing is rebuking unrighteous behavior that we see. We're calling a spade a spade, right? Now imagine if, if Job uh, lived today. You know, I think he would have a YouTube channel where he'd probably be labeled a loser because he lost everything. Oh, you have nothing, Job. You must have screwed up. You're a loser, right? Job, if you really followed God, you know, if you were really a good Christian... God would have protected you. It's all your fault you lost everything, man. You brought this upon yourself. Because that's what happened in this story, you know. Flip over to Job chapter 4, verse 7. You know, this is when Job, his, his good friend, you know, falsely accusing him of doing wrong. Verse 7 says, Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? See, Job's friend's telling him, Hey, man. Things are going bad for you. You must have did something wrong, right? I remember when, back when my woman left me, you know, and, you know, from time to time throughout my life, women have pushed me out of their lives. And, and people ask me, well, what'd you do wrong, Sean? You must have did something wrong. You know, isn't that how it always seems for us men, you know, when relationships go south, you know, even if it's completely her fault, she cheated on you, you know, she she broke her promises. She's the one who walked away and left, right, for no reason. Everybody still looks at us men and says, whoever perished being innocent, right? Whoever broke up or got divorced uh, because you didn't do something wrong, right? In other words, if you if you were treating her right, Sean, that wouldn't have happened to you, right? If you were so great of a man, bad things wouldn't happen to you, right? But let me tell you something, guys. The book of Job clearly if you read the whole thing you know and I can't go through the whole thing out of time but it, it shows us that bad things happen to good people good honest people bad things will happen to you because the devil's out there and he just wants to destroy you and wants you to curse God and he'll do anything in his power to get you to curse God look at uh, verse 29 uh, in chapter 6 sorry flip over to chapter 6 and, and check out verse 29 um, the Bible says, Return, I pray you, let it not be an iniquity. Or, excuse me, let, let it not be iniquity. Yea, return again, my righteousness is in it. So this is Job responding to his friend. And Job's proclaiming his innocence. He's saying, no, 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 like, you guys don't understand. I'm innocent. I didn't do anything wrong. He's telling his false accusers to return again. It means, hey, think about what you're saying, you know. Like, you guys need to recant everything that you just said right because he's saying hey i'm righteous my righteousness is in it okay i'm innocent so basically job's answering his, his accusers and saying you guys have it all wrong i don't deserve what's happening to me right now and you know i don't know why all these bad things are happening but i can tell you that i don't deserve it right that's 
Now flip over to chapter 7. Flip over to chapter 7. We're going to take a look at a few more verses. And let's see how Job un- deals with this unfair treatment. Verse 11 says, Therefore I will not refrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. So we see here that Job, you know, he's got bitterness in his soul. But he's speaking about it. He's venting. He's not bottling it up, right? Job says, you know, I'm going to talk about what's bothering me. I've been wronged. I don't know. I, I know that I don't deserve it. See, Job knew it wasn't his fault and everybody around him was falsely accusing him. So he says, you know what? I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to speak about it. I'm going to open up. I'm going to speak about it. And I'm going to rebuke everybody for this, for these false accusations against me. And for telling me that this situation that I'm in is my fault, even though I didn't do anything wrong. You see, guys, what the devil wants us to do is bottle everything up inside. He wants us to burn inside with hate and anger. He wants us to suffer and think that, you know, we brought this pain upon ourselves, that it's our fault. And, you know, I think, um, isn't that how MGTOW is treated a lot of the times? Feminists will, will tell us, hey, who hurt you, right? Who hurt you, right? That's what they told Job, who hurt you, Job? Why are you crying? You need to just man up, Job. Get with the program. All of us are doing it, right? See, nobody stuck up for Job. Nobody said, you know what, Job? I hear what you're saying, bro. Like, you're right. But what's happening to you is unfair. You you don't deserve this, man. But even throughout the whole ordeal, Job just kept praying to God. He kept staying faithful to God. You see, the point is, sometimes the devil just comes in. He completely screws up our life. Flips it all upside down. Even though we had nothing to do with it, right? And, and, you know, I'm I'm reminded of the movie, uh, The Batman, The Dark Knight, where uh, the Joker tells Batman, he says, or somebody, uh, some line in the movie where they say, you know, some people just want to watch the world burn. Right, you know, it's sad, but it's true. You know, some, some people, some women will get into relationships with you just to say, just to destroy it, right? Just to, just so that they can feel powerful. That hey, I left you. I left you crying. I left you miserable. I took you for all you got, right? I destroyed you, right? And that's what the devil did to Job. And some men, you know, they'll do the same thing to women, right? I'm not, I'm not saying women are the only ones who will do this, right? Some men are so miserable inside, right? They have no confidence in themselves. They have no self-worth. So they go out there and they think that they have to sleep with women. They have to defile women to make themselves feel better, to make themselves feel like a man. They feel like, oh, I'm sleeping with all these women. Now I'm something, right? But really, you're nothing. That's why you need to do that, right? So they'll go to any length, you know, and then they call them pickup artists right they'll go to any length they'll go out there seduce women lie to them just to sleep with her just so that they can feel better about themselves because really deep down inside they're harboring anger right they don't really love this woman they're just using her because they're empty in their own heart so let me tell you guys something the only thing that's going to fill that emptiness in your heart is god and and he will do it i promise you Romans chapter 5, New Testament says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice. Rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Right? See, the Bible doesn't say that we're going to find peace in, 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 in fornication and in sleeping with women. Or, or we're going to find peace in alcohol. Or peace in, in how many Instagram followers you have or how many likes you get on Facebook. No, the Bible says we're going to find peace through our Lord Jesus Christ. See, here's the thing. Here's the thing, guys. I'm going to skip towards the end, so flip over to Job chapter 42, because I, this, I don't want this message to drag on and on. In the end, God restores Job, the last chapter. Check out uh, Job chapter 42, verses 12. The Bible says, So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 camels and, the, and a thousand yoke of oxen and a thousand she-asses. See, in the, in the end... 
the Lord blesses Job more. Why? Why did God bless Job? Okay, I think God blesses Job because Job repented. I don't know about you guys, but if a woman were to come to me and say, Sean, you know, I saw your video. I understand what you're saying. Okay, a lot of women out there are out of control. I've been out of control. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, Sean. It's our fault. You know, I can I can see why you're frustrated. Please help me. Teach me to be different so I can know what to do so I don't do that anymore. You know, and if she was sincere, you know, I, I find it hard to believe that any guy would not accept her back in just like just like God accepted Job. And and he and he actually doubled his blessings cuz he said, "Hey, you know what? You're sincere, Job. You you're still with me." Right? Because, let me tell you something, a true, virtuous woman, a God-fearing woman, a woman who obeys the commandments, no man is going to deny her. No man is going to turn that woman down and say, no, nah, I don't want to marry you. <laughs> I mean, as, as tough as nails as, as, uh, as these MGTOW guys are and their resolve to not get married, if, if a really, truly submissive wife were to come to you and submit to you, you wouldn't turn that away. You'd be a fool. You'd be a fool because the Bible says, who can find such a woman for her f- price is far above rubies? The problem is, is these women, you know, they don't, they don't want to repent, right? They don't want to uh, change their ways. They don't want to follow the Bible. And I think, you know, the, uh, the, the story here in Job emb- embodies this, you know, it, it embodies this, that the devil put... The devil put him through the ringer, right? He took everything he's had, he, and, and Job came out the other side, and he was still dedicated to God, right? And isn't that what we all want in the end? We want a spouse who sticks by us, no matter what, who's loyal to us, who will say, hey, no matter what happens through, through sickness, through in health, I'm going to be with you. You know, and that's what Job proved to God. He said, hey, no matter what the devil throws at me, I'm going to stick with you, God, Right? So guys, in closing, you know, what can I say? I, I'm going to be honest. This message was hard for me to write. I was all over the place. There were so many different ways I wanted to go with it. But the point is this. I want you to flip over to the end of the Bible, the book of Revelations, chapter number 3. And we're going to close with this. Revelations chapter 3. Look at verse 15. The Bible says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert either cold or hot. You know what I hate? I hate a woman who is only half in. One day she loves you. The next day she hates you. She's neither cold nor she's hot. I'd much rather have a woman who's either just going to who's just gonna stand with me and say, Hey, look, I love you. I'm not going anywhere. No matter what happens. Right? Either, look, either you're going to be with me. And you're going to stay with me until death do us part. Or you just get out of here. Right? And that's what God's saying. God's saying, hey, look. Either jump in all the way. Be with me 100%. Love my commandments. Obey my commandments. And we're going to have a great relationship. Or just curse me. Walk away. And go live life on your own terms. So today I want to challenge you guys. You, you know, you have a decision to make. You have a choice to make today. Do we want to be like Job, right? Do we want to be all in for God and say, you know what, God, I'm going to follow your commandments. I'm going to stick with you through thick and thin, no matter what it is, no matter no matter how difficult things get. I'm going to stick with the Bible. I'm going to stick with the truth. I'm going to obey you. I'm going to love you. Do we want to have peace with God through Jesus Christ? Or do we want to curse God? Do we want to hate in our heart? Do we want to point the blame at other people? The choice is yours, guys. And I'll end by saying this. You know, I tried to preach against sin today, and uh, the sin of anger, excuse me. <coughs> and I know that I was all over the place, and I apologize. I tried to separate the difference, though, between hate and rebuke. So I hope you can take that away from this video. That the Bible says there is a difference. 
And even though the Bible does say that there is a time to be angry, there is a time to hate. But if our anger keeps us from obedience to God, it becomes sin. Right? See, even Jesus Christ himself got angry. Even Jesus Christ made a whip and whipped people in anger out of the temple, out of God's holy temple. So there is a proper place for anger. It does, it, it does exist. And, and, but it has to be based on the commandments of God. If you're getting angry for any other reason than if somebody's disobeying the commandments of God, right? Remember, Job's, everything that happened with Job was supernatural, right? His wife got struck by lightning. His, his, you know, all his um, animals died of natural causes and things like this. What I'm saying is, you know, Job couldn't point the blame at some other person, right? He can only blame God or Satan. In our lives, some people commit sins against us, and, and we have a right to be angry and rebuke them and say, hey, this is the part of the Bible you, you, you violated and you did wrong. You need to change your behavior, right? And if they apologize to us, then, it, then we ought to forgive them and say, hey, no problem. You know, I, I, I wanted to just help you bring that aware so I didn't get angry, right? Now, see, it doesn't help us at all if we rebuke somebody and we, and we speak in anger and belittle them just for the sake of, of rebuking them and shaming them, right? If we're going to correct somebody's behavior, we need to do it honestly, sincerely, with love in an attempt to reconcile them back to God, right? Otherwise, you know, we're going to build rage inside of us if we're just constantly bashing people over the head with, with no sincere hope of them changing their behavior or trying to do the right thing according to the commandments. So, last thing I'll say is this, you know, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to speak up. If you have something to say to somebody, say it. Because if you don't, you will forever have to hold your peace. And remember, God, you know, He commands us to rebuke others for the sake of creating harmony. Not rebuking people just to bash them and rub it in their face that, you know, they've, wicked, that, you know, they've committed a wicked sin. That's not what we're called to do. Jesus didn't call us to win arguments. He called us to win souls. Anyways, that's my message for the day, guys. You guys have a wonderful day. Um, and as always, I'm going to give God the last word on this. And God bless you guys. Um, and uh, have a good day. <laughs> uh, I'm going to read from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 17, if you want to read along. Have a, great, have a great day. God bless. The Bible says, This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of their uh, blindness of their heart, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put, put off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, every man's truth with his neighbor. If we are members one another, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands that thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to use for the edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, 
even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Amen. God bless.